YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. Guys, today we're going to be talking about three of the most important tips that I can share for fishing shallow water. And I'm telling you guys, these are some of the most overlooked tricks and tips that a lot of anglers don't want you to know about. So we're going to talk about that. But real fast though, I told you it was coming. We're going to be giving away our prizes. We're going to be giving away our Mega Wear Kill Guard. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. And we have our winners. We also have the winner for the uh, Team Loose Pro SP, which is the skipping and pitching reel. We're really excited to give this stuff away, guys. Without further ado, let's get right to it. So the winner of the Mega Wear Kill Guard, you know, this is a a product that I have on almost every single boat that I own. Uh, it works on your fiberglass boats and it is such a lifesaver, especially when you're beaching your boat up shallow. So if you haven't yet, go check out Mega Wear Kill Guard. The winner of the Kill Guard is Patrick Schaefer. Again, that's Patrick Schaefer. He is, um, I, Patrick, I will message you on Instagram and I will get this Kill Guard, Kill Guard uh, shipped out to you. Now the other winner, I've got to pull it up, I already screenshot the other winner. Uh, and this is the winner for the Team Lose Pro SP, which is skipping and pitching real by Lose. If you can, go check them out at lose.com. Uh, and that winner is Rob Welsh. Again, that's Rob Welsh. So thank you, Rob and Patrick, for entering into the contest. And thank you all for entering it in to that giveaway. It really helps me out to know that y'all guys actually give a crap about what I post. So big time uh thank you to all of you but let's dive right on into this this is a very important topic and this is three keys to shallow uh, more shallow water success actually you know when you're fishing extremely shallow water and i'm talking one to two foot and even shallower than that it's really important to be quiet and you hear people talk about it from time to time but guys sound echoes through that water so easily and i mean we see a lot of guys fishing out of aluminum boats and if you're an aluminum boat you have to be even quieter because that aluminum boat will will let noise travel through the water even better so it's really important to be super quiet when you're on the water so no yelling and screaming and and closing lids hard and and moving rods around but that's not what we're going to talk about you know, one of the big keys that I actually do is I always either put my Lowrance HGS 12s in standby or just turn them off altogether. And I will also turn off my active target. Now, the deal is, is we have so many different transducers these days. You know, they're always clicking back like, tick, 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 and you actually hear them whenever you're by your trolling motor. And honestly, guys, when you get in a pressured situation where the fish are really highly pressured, I'm telling you right now, it makes a world of difference by turning those electronics off. Now, granted, if you're having to use the electronics, and I mean actually use them uh, to actually target the fish, whether it be with active target or whatever, I get it. You got to leave it on. But when you're in that really shallow water, do you really need that waypoint unless you're on just a, a massive flat that has, you know, no contour change or you don't know exactly where you're at? Because most of the time, if we turn them off and we just kind of close our eyes, we're going to have an idea of kind of where we're at. So turn those graphs off turn all of it off and that right there just that tip alone will help you catch more bass in my opinion and so the second thing this is not really a sponsor plug but i mean they are a sponsor of mine and that is a hydro wave i can't tell you how many people i have tell me man like i don't i don't think a hydro wave works well let me tell you guys when you're in like one to two foot of water and you're fishing lily pads it absolutely works and let me tell you why it's not about turning bass on. What it does is it activates the bait fish, whether it's the shad, the bluegill, or whatever is around, it activates them. I can't make any sense of it, I don't know why, but if you turn that thing on, I always use it on a schooling delay, um, so it's a 30 second delay. So it's not running the whole time, it'll it'll run for a, little, a few seconds or whatever, and then it'll just turn off. And I really think it kind of confuses the fish around you because they're like, okay, I just heard something, heard something. And they're like, I don't hear it anymore. And I really think it it really piques their interest. So especially in situations like I was just at at the Red River, throwing that frog, I had my hydro wave on. And I would actually, I actually think it made a huge difference where I was at. I mean, I had so many boats around me and those fish, like I'd, at one point, it was really funny. I'd have so many shad following along with the boat and bluegill, like I could hit my deck kind of hard 
and they just all scatter out. I mean, they were just like staying with the boat. So it was pretty cool how that was working. Um, the other thing, the third, and once again, I, I think they're all really important, but other than just being really, really quiet, you have to really adjust the way you troll using your troll motor. I use a, a motor guide a tour pro and it's just the, the troll motor I use. I mean, I, I get a lot of comments and questions about it because it has an enormously large head on it and people want to kind of make fun of it. But at the end of the day, guys, it's a really good troll motor. It's strong. It's quiet and go through stuff really well. But one important thing on that troll motor and all troll motors for that matter is turn your speed down. You don't have to have it on 10 when you're in a shallow grassy flat or a you know a pad flat or something like that. Turn your trolling motor down. Turn it to like two or three. Ease through these areas, but get off of your dang trolling motor. I mean, I can't stress that enough. So many guys I see, they just, they put their trolling motor on high and they just go. And don't get me wrong, in certain situations, if you're not in real shallow vegetation and you're not having to bust through stuff, cool. And you're making real long cast or whatever, but guys, you're missing so many bites. Slow down. And a lot of times, if I get a bite, I'll just stop. And I mean like dead stop. And actually, one thing that I noticed, especially in practice, that made a really big difference is I'd pull into an area, turn my hydrowave on, turn all my graphs off, power pole down, and I would just sit there for like 15 or 20 minutes and not make a cast. I'd let everything settle down. Then I would stand up. I wouldn't then immediately hit my trolling motor. I would just start making fan casts around me. And that made an enormous difference on getting bites. And paying attention to those little bitty clues like that will put additional fish in your boat. But the other thing is, is I always utilize my power poles. I can't tell you how many times I pulled up in those shallow flats like that. And just enough breeze has blown me onto the target that I'm trying to cast to. So drop those power poles. Really position yourself where you can cover the entire area. You know, one thing that I did at the Red River in particular is I'd pull up in these areas and I would get situated exactly where I wanted to be where I can make a cast of a 180 cast. And what I mean by that is I can look to my left and I had targets here and I'd have targets on my right and everywhere in between. And that was really, really important for making sure I had the exact cast that I needed at every situation without having to move my boat. And those power poles allowed me to do that. I didn't have to touch my troll motor. I didn't have to make any additional noise. And I, all I had to do was make those casts and be really, really accurate with my cast. So guys, hopefully these couple of tips will help you the next time you're fishing shallow water. And maybe, just maybe, they will help you get a big old check and make you a lot of money in the process. Guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Congratulations to the winners. Thank you all for entering, and we'll see you on the next video.